Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to the channel. I am Shankadeep and I build things here at Geeky Ants. Of late, I've been working a bit with AWS and I really like how simple it made certain things for developers. Things like authentication, which um, is provided by Cognito, then generating GraphQL APIs using AppSync. Uh, these things are made really easy with uh, AWS Amplify. Also, it has an out-of-the-box database solution. I think it's called DynamoDB. Mm, so I've been working mostly with web apps in my project. So I decided to go ahead and um, give it a try with React Native and see how it goes. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, guys. So this is the app that we are going to build here. It's a plain blog app. As in using this app, you can view, the, view a lot of blogs that there are. You can create your own blogs or maybe read blogs that have been written by others. So currently this app does not have, like it's just a UI that's built. So we are going to add the backend integration to it. By backend, I mean, we're going to add authentication. We are going to add CRUD features as in we'll be able to create new posts, edit them and as well as delete them. And also we're going to fix navigation for us because uh, right now it's all into a plain stack navigation. So we'll get rid of this one and um, we'll have authenticated routes, protected routes by that. So yeah, I think uh, that should be it. Let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I would suggest that all of you get your Amplify configured. So these are the steps that we can follow. I'll attach the link for this one to the description so that if you before we get started you should have this set up also i think it's free yes it is free but it asks for you to put in your credit card details but yeah it's free unless you consume a huge amount of data i think you should be okay with that so once the configuration is done um this all i'll share this link so um, we can get started so I already have this basic setup, the initial setup in the GitHub repo that will be shared with you. So if you want to do it with me, like code along with me. So that's also something you can do. And once this app is complete, I'll also have a completed version in GitHub as well. So you can do it any way you like to do. So yeah, let's get started. Let's do it. So yeah, the Amplify configure step is something which I'm going to skip for now but that's necessary if you want to do it also there's this video by Nader here which you can take a look that will help you get it set up and all so yeah this is the step which you're going to do it's for react native i'm using expo if you want to use the react native cli you can do that but expo is easier for me i think it would be easier for you as well to get started off with so yeah let's do this i have created the app uh, I, i'm in my app so let's start with this step which asks me to init. So yeah. So basically what we need to do is just select all the default settings that they throw at us. So initially they'll ask us what is the name of your app and where do you want it to be? So blog app demo is right for me. I think this sounds good. Name for the environment. Let me call it dev. Mm, Visual Studio Code. I think everyone uses VS Code now, so yeah, no surprises there. iOS and JavaScript, JavaScript, of course, React Native, yes. Source directory path, slash, yeah, distribution, yeah. Build command, just hit enter for all of this. So it's going to ask you for a couple of questions. So if you get confused as to what the answer is, don't worry, just keep selecting whatever the default options they give us. So I think that's very, uh, easy for us as in you won't be confused okay so it's ask me for the okay now it is looking at the default provider that aws has so yeah it usually takes some time but yeah there we go we want to use aws profile yes so when you set up when you do the configuration step um, that i skipped there you'll be probably setting up your um, profile so i have two profiles here default and one with my name so the default one i use for my work purpose so i'm probably going to use this uh you are most likely going to have just one profile so go ahead with that if it's default so yeah just go ahead with that one 
it is now adding the environment dev so yeah okay so this step is complete so now we'll need to do amplify add api so that's a very simple they, they probably tell you everything that you need to do so graphql or rest graphql api name blog app demo okay i cannot put this blog it doesn't take special characters so yeah let's call it blog app demo so for uh, the authentication type that we are going to use our app we'll need to use cognito user pool if you want you can also go with api key the advantage cognito user pool gives us that uh, you get protected uh, requests so as in you can only make requests to the posts if you are logged in with your cognito username so i'm going to go ahead and do that but if you want to skip it for now you can go ahead with api key but yeah default configuration yes how do you want you just to be able to sign in username i'm done Uh, do you want to configure advanced settings with the GraphQL API? No, I do not. Do you have an annotated? I do not. Do you want a guided schema creation? Yes. So yeah, it asks me what describe my project. Uh, I would say a single object with fields. Yeah. <laughs> the irony is that it says um, there's an option for blog with posts, which is exactly the app which we are building. But then you won't go for it because ours is a most one-to-one -one relation so we'll just skip that part and just move ahead with the basic one first you want to edit the schema yes let me edit the schema yeah so it gives a model id name i think it would be called title and yeah i think that should be good enough for us title in description i've saved the schema I say yes go ahead okay it is done mm, yeah, i think all good now so it says amplify push it will um, post the api graphql api so that i can make the request to and from it so yeah let's see I'm sure you want to continue yes You want to generate a code for your newly created GraphQL API? Let's say yes. Language generation target JavaScript. Yes. Update all possible. Yes. So the thing to uh, note here is that once you um, update your GraphQL schema, so all your existing. So currently, it's we are building one from scratch, so we do not have any uh, queries or mutations. But, but once you add uh, or make changes to your schema um, keep in mind that all your queries and mutations will be overwritten so yeah if you uh, made some changes like made some changes manually to your queries make sure you keep a backup or maybe have them uh, fetch them from a separate source and not from the default source so yeah just go ahead with the default settings now this step is going to take some time so i'll let it run and then we'll get back yeah okay guys i think the Amplify push went well, it was successful, but there was one thing which I missed and I would like to point it out to you guys as well. So there was a warning which was there which I didn't look at earlier, I don't know how I missed that. But it says that the following types do not have auth enable, that is the type to do, it does not have auth enable. So consider using auth fill model. So since we are using Cognito as our authentication, so we will need to add the auth, auth rules with our model. So that when we make requests we know like the system knows that okay this is what i need to like if a user is making a request he's actually authorized to do so or not there's a link for that i'm going to open that up and let's look at the documentation that's there yeah so this is the auth docu authorization documentation so it has various types of rules that you can allow create create update delete so basically it gives everyone allow the permission to do everything but we don't want that we just want uh, the user as in the owner to be um, able to update and delete and not others 
so there are a couple of use cases here that if you go through the documentation you'll be able to check but uh the condition that we want here is this one as in the owner gets to do everything but others only um, will create and look at other to do's but will not update and delete to do's as in post which do not belong to them right so this is the authentication rule for that so i'm just going to copy it over to my um, model to my schema and just post it there yeah i think this looks good i also need to um, specify i also need to tell them that okay this is uh, the owner so that in my front end when i were to if i were to show my edit button i should be aware that okay um, this is the owner so i show the edit button now or i do not show the edit button because the current logged in user is not the owner of this post so yeah that's what you need to do uh, owner is a required string field also it's going to be called a post and not a to do yeah i think that should do it that should do it for us let's try to push these changes that we have made now so yeah now amplify will ask you that okay the changes that we do now will override all our queries and mutations do you want to do that i'll say yes you want to do that so yeah let's go ahead with that Okay, so yeah, I think um, we have done that. So it says all resources are updated in the cloud. GraphQL operation successfully saved in SRC GraphQL. So let's take a look at SRC GraphQL. So we have got all our queries and all our mutations. So let's try some of these out. Uh, we do not have the front end for this yet. So that is where App Sync comes in. So we'll just go into our App Sync console. Uh, if you have trouble finding your app sync console, you can just click on services and, it, and type app sync there. That should uh, do it for you. Also, there is Cognito, Dynamo, DB, whatever you want to use. So, I'm going to use app sync. So, let me just boot app sync up. So, yeah, this created the APIs for me. Uh, let's look at the schema. Is it the same schema that I created? Yes, it is. Title, ID, description, and owner. So let me try to create a couple of posts and then fetch them in this um, and see if it works and then we'll move it over to our front end that is our app. So yeah, let's test it here. We can test it with the queries that we have here. So um, what is get post? We can get post. So I want to get all the posts. It will be called get list. It's called a list posts. This post I want to list all the posts. Okay. I need to get items because it will be an array of all the responses. I want the title, description, ID. Yeah. I think now it should give me an empty array because there are no posts now. No, it does not. It says I'm not authorized. Of course I'm not that's because I uh, we that's because of the rule that we put in there that only um, authorized user only logged in users will be able to do that so I'll first need to log in but I do not have a user so let's create a user right now for that we do not need to go to a front end to create one uh, Cognito will help us create one we can create one from here and then once we <coughs> do the authentication sign up part in our app, we can remove this user. Uh, let me create a new user. Username will be new user. We do not need an invitation, temporary password. Temporary password, email as I do not want email. No, I think I need to give the email because Otherwise, it won't um, it won't allow me to need the email and the email has to be confirmed. So we can give any random email and then just create the user uh, with that. Uh, I don't need the phone number. So yeah, created a user. Password password did not confirm with policy. Okay, yeah. So we have policies as well. Um, it says minimum length eight. I cannot want that. Let me have a minimum length of three. 
characters also you see that we can have all the various password rules that you would usually app in your ad like add in your app sorry you have numbers you can have special characters upper case letters lower case letters mm. so yeah a lots of I'm sorry <clears throat> lots of uh, rules that you can add for your password days to expire yeah seven days sounds about right to me minimum password length must be greater or equal to six so of course we'll save it to six yeah i think that should be it let me create the user now test user test user no invitation temporary password six uh, I'll verify my email okay the user is created let me make the request now and see how it goes app sync where was i where were my queries need to log in okay i need the client id so i'll need to get it incognito as well so i might as well open it in a new tab here and see manage user pool so to get your client id i think this is where you'll get it yes of course app client id copy it paste test user password the user needs a new password okay it was a system generated password so i created a new password now so no thanks let me test it now okay now now it works now i'm able to get all the items which are precisely zero items let me create a new item then so this is a mutation let me call it create create post create post of course and it needs an input so what does the input need input needs title description and owner so title would be nice post description i like this post owner would be test user i id title description let me just fetch everything and see how it goes create post okay fine now this is created so now if i make the request for get posts it should show me the single post okay okay fine so now we have created our graphql api so we have also seen how authentication works as in we have seen it from the admin console but we need to add it to the front end to our app so yeah let's get started with the authentication flow now